Okay, good afternoon, folks. I think we are live now. We have a very eminent panel with us, and the topic being post COVID repairing damaged societal values. What are the societal values that we could re repair or rejuvenate as you know we kind of go through the crisis and come out of the crisis? With me on the panel, we have some of the very brilliant minds and led by a public service leader, Minister Chetan Chauhan from the government of Uttar Pradesh, a former cricketer. I think most of us in India would definitely know it and the cricket lovers would certainly know about him. But we also discover that he's been a banker in his career as a professional and entrepreneur. We also have Aditya Berlia, uh, again, an entrepreneur in diverse sectors, family business, education, philanthropy, etc., uh, who would be sharing his views. We have Rajiv Matri, again, an entrepreneurial mindset, uh, investment banking, uh, private equity, startup world, etc., to look at how the you know the, the values of entrepreneurship in a post-COVID world are extremely important. In fact, even now they are the most important. Maybe a solution-oriented approach. And then we have Dr. Sheetal Amte uh, heading uh, the, the Anand One, uh, doing amazing work in physical disability and uh, education and environment. First of all, we'll start with opening remarks by Minister Chauhan for about five to seven minutes, and then each of my uh, colleagues will have about three minutes for their views and then we'll keep the round going those who are listening in and watching in and uh, popping in to see this discussion please leave your comments in the chat and as in when we uh, come through those questions we'll take your questions to the speakers without much ado may i invite minister chetan chuhan for his opening remarks please sir good evening gentlemen namaskar i would like to first thank uh and uh, dr Frank Richter to have me on, on this uh, prestigious global platform. I would first like to share with all of you, I belong to Uttar Pradesh, the biggest state in India. And if it was a, it was a separate country, it would be the sixth largest country in the world. Uh, the efforts in this uh, coronavirus uh, are uh, going on by the UP government as on 22nd June to UP as under 20,000 COVID active cases with 550 mortality. Each life is important and my heart goes out to all the families that are dealing with this. For a population of 230 million, 23 crores, our numbers are quite manageable. And this has, be has been because of the various action and effective action taken by the Honorable Chief Minister, Sri Yogi Adityanath Ji, and the UP government to have a mitigation plan. We have so far planned uh, active in measuring oxygen levels of COVID patients using oxygen uh, meter. We have advised people to wear masks all the time the moment they leave the house, plus social distancing. The police and the officials of the government make people comply with this. Uh, besides, we have been advising all our various departments, whether it's the health department or the police department, the home guards departments, uh, all social organizations. We have been t advising people, wash hands, use sanitization, uh, sanitizers, and uh, before you leave the house or we, you touch anything or you go to the office, we have prepared the hospital beds and quarantine, I will give you the numbers later. Uh, we have prepared the hospital beds and quarantine places in different places. All these migrant workers who have come back to UP, uh, they, they number a lot. Uh, they, have, they are all put into quarantine for 14 days before they are allowed to go home. Either they are in quarantine or people who are sick, they are put into the isolation wards, isolation uh, quarantine. And uh, some who we feel after testing, we feel that they are okay, they are not sick, they don't have fever, they don't have cough, cold, normal, then they all go into home quarantine. They go, they're allowed to go to their houses. But in every village, all the mollas, we, we call them Nigrani committees, you know, a committee which looks after them and they, they look after them. They're not allowed to go outside the house so that if anybody is uh, active, is positive, he is not, he does not infect the others. Uh, besides this, uh, coming to the positive side, 
uh, that is uh, we have to look after the uh, uh, the people because there are all these people who are coming back msme and other departments are looking out into and creating job opportunities for all up workforce that are come back from various cities we need to tap this resource for our growth we engaged with center and various state governments to our shramik special trains we have used 1633 trains and brought back about 230 million people back home each one of the ministry ministers and people's representatives all the mlas the mps they are out in the field in our districts and responsible areas to measure mitigate and help fight this pandemic daily reports are shared to ensure that we are not missing data every minister in the government is attached is in charge uh, we call them prabhari prabhari ministers of those two two, two districts and the minister of states they look after one district and every day we take report of what is happening in the districts of uttar pradesh we are looking to strong to looking at strong growth of uttar pradesh we need invest investment and jobs in agriculture manufacturing and service sector we want to engage all of you with the global community to come up to up we have land power human capital and support of fast track desk by our government there is much to do and let us join hands in this opportunity for making uttar pradesh and india more strong more prosperous come and join us in this program thank you th- th- thank you chetan chawan ji that was awesome amazing and so beautifully mm, fantastically on time you know as a moderator that's one of our things we want to get all our speakers good value but uh, thank you so much there were some thoughts coming to my mind when you talked about you know the challenges and the data that you're collecting but i'll keep my questions for the later on right first let's have uh, our next speaker now aditya berlia the floor is yours sir thank you so much it's an absolute pleasure to be here and uh, my gratitude uh, for esteemed panelists for uh, uh, dr frank jorgan uh, for horaces for putting this uh, together hey for me very fundamentally the social contract has been broken and we have known that for a while and covid has just made that more evident and when i mean the social contract i do see it at all levels countries and their citizens uh, residents and their communities societies and their different stakeholders now covid 19 has brought out the very best in so many people and the very worst in so many people and for many their values have been tested were tested and have been found seriously wanting and this is a great opportunity for self reflection to understand how we can transform as societies governments communities and as a people to truly to truly take forward the journey of perhaps for how I say this of being human a large part of that responsibility rests with educators and our education system uh, which have been failing despite the incredible amount of resources time energy and talent that have been poured in and it only goes to prove what many including me have been saying for quite a while the system is broken and we need widespread reforms but our education system quite frankly is a reflection of how broken our current societal values are how we have double standards for for private and public services and enterprise how we and our leaders deflect accountability how we reach for a populism instead of rationality and action how we confuse activism and speeches for genuine leadership shorten fried for journalism and just random good marketing for real substance now these problems were there already and i think covid-19 has just laid them bare for all to see character grit integrity pragmatism hard work compassion diplomacy delicacy rationality and self sacrifice are great values and are universal mal- uh, and are universal values and these are independent of any pandemic or quite frankly independent of any age for that matter so i don't see a pre covid values or a post covid values i see good human values and they for me were as valid yesterday as they are today my deep concern however is that we are not reflecting and we are, are we are still not willing to confront those societal uh, and moral failings that have prevented the rise of nation 
our nation in particular, and of our social structures and society. And that we are still using the old tools of propaganda to sweep down mistakes and failings under the carpet, rather than really admitting and confronting them. Now, if we need to go forward, we need to first understand what needs to be fixed. And as a side effect of this terrible pandemic, we have the opportunity to do so. My greatest worry is just how we've squandered the time gained, with few exceptions, I think. And this time was paid in economic blood. We will squander this uh, additional time and just treat this as another black swan blip. You know, the vaccine will come in, uh, the curve will get flattened. And rather than what it really is, which is a, a sudden and dramatic removal of the social facade uh, that shined a mirror to what's happening in our society and what we really need to move on. Now, I have a great faith in the values of India. Our culture runs deep. And this is a great strength for us. Our ethics and morality have firm foundations. We understand better than most the need for self-sacrifice, the concepts of dharma, which is duty, karma, actions, and consequence. And But what we need to do is to better translate our value systems into our institutions. And only then can we really move forward, not just beyond COVID-19, but for the decades ahead. And I'll stop at that because, again, as I said, for me, the value systems, same values we needed before COVID are the exact same values we need during COVID and the exact same values we need after COVID. Great. Thank you very much. And I think the point you're making is that I mean, uh, COVID is an opportunity to kind of trigger or re-trigger what the change we want tomorrow. And in fact, you know, the second round that we'll go, the request would be to kind of come up with specific suggestions or solutions or ideas. I mean, for the government or for each of our sectors, because, because Chetan Chawanji is here, at least, you know, we can get some of this dialogue going forward. Thank you so much, Aditya. May I now request uh, Dr. Sheetal uh, to, to, to sh share her thoughts, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, Frank and Horasis for having me here. It's been a pleasure to have uh, to have got that uh, opportunity to interact with all of you. Uh, I would speak up uh, from the point of Mother Earth. I think this is the time when Mother Earth has actually, uh, you know, made the man's ego naked. We have completely gone naked and Mother Earth has taken over the control. I think this is a watershed moment for the health preparedness for everything that we used to boast for. It's a moment where Mother Earth has told us that my health and your wealth is interconnected and your wealth will depend on my health. So the nature, the nature's health is more important than the man's health. And also, I think for millions of years together, man has been thinking that the food chain has been a pyramidal structure and man is at the apex of the food chain, while the nature has been thinking that it's a spherical structure where man is a part of it. So now we better understand that we are a part of the food chain and we better behave in that manner. And otherwise, we are going to perish and perish and perish. And this is going to get... Uh, the mother earth is going to send a lot of bugs and super bugs and we are going to you know just get lost in all such nonsense uh you know what i would say is uh, the pandemics and the egos and all those things thank you so much dr sheetal yeah i think that's an interesting idea we conceptualize that we are sitting at the top of a pyramid the point you're saying is rather it's a, it's a cyclical so you know what goes in comes out so it's a cycle which we are Awesome. Thank you so much. Now, may I invite uh, Rajiv, please, uh, with your thoughts to share with the panel and with the audiences who's listening in. And guys and folks, if anybody has any questions, please pop in and leave your comments in the chat. We do have about 21 viewers, it seems. That's what the dashboard is telling me. So folks are either listening in or absorbing what we are saying. But we have, do have some audiences also. Please. Uh, uh, thank you, Ravinder, and uh, thank you to Frank and Horace as well for inviting me uh, to this uh, uh, online meeting. So uh, I agree largely with uh, the points made by the other panelists and uh, especially with other, what Aditya said, that good values uh, remain good values, you know, before or after COVID. Uh, and there is a certain universal aspect to that. Uh, but just talking about uh, the specific sector that uh, I sort of largely operate in, which is the domain of 
entrepreneurship and startups so what has been happening as everybody knows is there has been a heightened uncertainty concerning the business viability and financing so many ventures that were actually relying on equity funding to grow uh may find that that kind of funding is not available anymore uh in in this difficult economic environment and and undoubtedly there was a lot of excess building up not just in india but uh, globally and and uh, th- th- there is uh, uh, also no doubt that there will be a reset now a major reset which will have a serious impact on all the stakeholders be they founders be they uh, investors or even employees of uh, what is one of the largest uh, job creation uh, engines of the country so at a time like this i think uh, there are two values that i would uh, offer one is empathy and the second is community so i would say that uh, uh, leaders in this field and obviously other fields as well need to be empathetic uh, resilient while trying to keep the community together uh, this is obviously very challenging given both the uh, nature of unprecedented nature of the uh, public health situation and the economic fallout and uh, there are to be very frank no easy answers and uh, i think broader discussion between uh, 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 individuals from different sectors uh, like we have on this panel and the participants who are listening in uh, coming to a forum like the horasis india meeting i think only only uh, a frank sharing of views can help crystallize some answers so i would leave it at that thank you so much rajiv i think yeah absolutely i mean the core uh, the the values of empathy and compassion and and definitely yes again the point being that it's not easy to bring up around uh, about this change i'll take maybe one minute to kind of uh, share in my perspective on this and then we uh, welcome uh, thoughts from minister chauhan uh, in a very concrete sense when i saw the title of this you know topic of arts i talked to frank and i said from my perspective what i like what i think as we all talk, education is a key no doubt it's the minds right and even if you look at what the corona has given us the covid we also have the issue of the racism and such things going on in this planet core is maybe it starts with children and you know yes compassion empathy kindness respect for diversity etc in the curriculum so that one it reduces bullying in the schools today schools may bullying itself is a big problem and secondly when these kids grow up maybe then as adults there'll be lesser number of outliers compared to otherwise because more of them would have been perhaps have gone through a perspective of you know looking at life from a slightly different lens so i am coming from that perspective often and pushing for an advocacy that schools right from k through 12 compulsory courses every day whatever good smart immersion but it's a long term and even that's not an answer full answer as such but amazingly that's where it's heading uh minister chohan welcome back sir uh, you've heard the other panelists you know giving their views and their thoughts some on uh, you know like the last speaker rajiv was mentioning compassion empathy and looking at the startup ecosystem and by the way if the state of up of course is all are looking for jobs then how do you align the, those uh, those challenges which rajiv is mentioning that entrepreneurs are facing <clears throat> similarly like what aditya is talking about education right and things being said but how much is happening and what dr sheetal was talking about a life cycle a cycle or a cyclic existence we all have so between all of these what are your thoughts now and this round let it be reflections and thoughts and building up on thoughts or suggestions from each one of you minister yours and you have 5 minutes sir please see i'll start with empathy, uh, empathy and uh, and uh, the uh, human values which are which has come here let me very honestly say i'm not boasting you know, that i come from up but the kind of kindness which was there which was shown by the people we had we have had about 230000 people who have come by bus uh, by train uh, by the shamik specials back to up then we've got about 500000 people Uh, who have come back by buses or trucks back to back to UP. It was a Herculean task to look after these people. I don't mean to be critical of the other states, but the kind of arrangements which should have been made by the states where these migrated um, migrated workers were working, they had they gave their heart and soul 
to these people. They work very hard. They should have been looked after better, and and I think they could have been transported better instead of leaving everything on on Uttar Pradesh, on on my state. Be uh, my my uh, my chief minister was uh, very uh, thoughtful. He was very kind, and he told the states we would like to bring all these migration migrated uh, migrated workers back to it. We we'll, we welcome welcome them. All that we ask these other states were to leave them at our boundary, so that how we couldn't have made arrangements and people, especially coming by buses. Uh, we made special arrangements for these people. Once they reached the boundary of the state, buses were there waiting for them. Immediately, all these people were taken into the uh, into the quarantine center. They were tested. They were they, they were uh, medically examined. All those who were okay, they were all put into buses and sent to their respective homes. On the way, please believe me, hundreds and hundreds of uh, 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 NGOs, uh, they were there on the road giving them water. It was 45 degrees temperature, around 45, very, very hot in UP at that time. And uh, they all came forward. They all came forward giving them food packets and food and some of these families who went into the in, into the villages, they were all given ration, uh, dry ration, uh, and uh, each of them were running into thousands or into lakhs. By the UP government, each worker was paid one thousand rupees uh, uh, for three months. For three months, they were, they were they were all given free rations uh, by by the government. In fact. Free uh, rice was given to them so that you know some or the other they could all settle down and and uh, uh, be all happy. All those people who were who we, the government thought at the bound at the as I said at the state boundary they were all medically examined. All those people who were unwell they were all put into the quarantine. They were taken into the hospital. Who were sick they were all into the hospital. And then people who reached their homes they were all put into home quarantine. They were all looked after. I thought I thought the UP government has done a tremendous job. Uh -huh. Coming to the second part, the, the second part is um, about the uh, pollution and environment. Yes, I agree hundred percent. Mother Earth has shown that you have only have told us human beings that so far you have only looked after yourself. You have not looked after me, and this was sort of a I would say a retaliation by Mother Earth. Okay, look after me also, and please believe me. The which the reports have come in two months' time, the whole whole environment changed. We had you know the um, the uh, pollution level came down. We saw the rivers becoming absolutely pure, uh, non polluted. We could see the birds singing in 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 the um, uh, in, in the parks and the bird sanctuaries. So, so, you know, so much of healthy atmosphere which was there. And it is time that we human beings, whether it is the government or people who are working or in government or people who are normal people, agriculturists, everybody, it is time that we give back some time to the Mother Earth and, and, and whatever uh, good which has happened uh, to, to the Mother Earth, to, to the environment, uh, we, we should protect that. Then the latter part, the last part is we have to look after all these people who have uh, they have been driven out of the jobs. It's an economy. Uh, it's a Herculean task. Let me tell you, it's not an easy task. Even as a politician, as a minister, let me be very frank, it's a Herculean task. And each and every one of us from different walk of life, we will all have to contribute. We'll all have to get together. We can't leave everything on the government, whether it's the central government or the state government. We will all have to come forward, volunteer, volunteer, because uh, this is a Herculean task. This is a big task. We have to resettle all these people. A lot of people who have left their jobs or wherever they're working in the different states, they've come back to the states. We have to find jobs for them in the state or a lot of them want to go back, you know, so there will be reverse. The reverse migration has started. Uh, you'll be, you know, you'll be uh, shocked to hear that the reverse migration has started. And, and a lot of industries, whether they are in Maharashtra or in Gujarat or in Noida or in um, uh, Haryana, they are 
paying they are giving sending buses to these uh, to the houses or to the villages of these workers to for them to come back so that the industries could start so this reverse migration is also taking place so we will have to be uh, we will have to be uh, really uh, selfless selfless we not ourselves only we will have to be selfless we will have to work for these people and whatever help we can do whether it is the and a lot will depend on the industries a lot will depend or depend on the bus, uh, on the businesses because these people they are all gone out of job they are all unsure at the moment people are scared because they don't know what is going to happen the inevitable may happen uh, the, uh, and uh, these workers whether they are workers or they are agriculturists whoever they are they may, or even school children also uh, they are also you know slightly apprehensive i think slightly i feel sometimes that their confidence level has come down they need a lot of reassurance they need a lot of confidence and they need a lot of moral boosting also so that you know, okay this is a pandemic this is a big big time pandemic this is a big uh, um, uh, tragedy or uh, um, um, a difficulty uh, which has uh, which has fallen a misery which has fallen on this mother earth not only in india but in the, on the mother earth we all have to uh, help one another and we have to resettle all these people thank you so much minister chohan you touched upon so many points i think yes definitely you know compassion in governance i think the example when you're giving on migrant laborers how they were handled by the up government compassion uh, there in governance importance of data in governance as you just mentioned that you know how data is being collected and all and then oneness with nature as you were mentioning with respect to what sheetal was mentioning environment and the challenge of entrepreneurship that being said now i invite uh, our uh, speakers to take about 3 minutes each we are good on time we don't have too many questions coming up and i'll keep my my talk uh, uh, i mean limited so that you get more time so that we can all share and so that you know minister chohan can also listen into you know such brilliant minds and sir all of them come from uh, an interdisciplinary background all of them are like you know thought leaders as well as entrepreneurs as well as doing social aspects of their work so aditya on to you sir and it'll be interesting if you can draw down to some specific maybe suggestions for public private etc because that will help us take it forward thank you i'll try to be short ji you know on these things you could write books and still have a lot more to say so i'll try to be very short on my thing there first i i i want to uh, elaborate on what i meant the facade has been lifted 450000 people every year this is the who figures die from tuberculosis 90% of them are curable 1200 people every day where is my tb counter on national tv where are all the people from civil society from all who have come out oh we have to save lives we have to save lives we have to save lives and that's happening for the last 10 years 4 and 1/2 million from one disease alone right so that that's what i mean the facade has been lifted uh, we really have to take a hard look at ourselves at how did we allow so many people to die year after year after year and only woke up once the rest of the world woke up during covid-19 uh, ji you mentioned uh, children and i get very upset now whenever i hear somebody about saying the children are the future we have a tendency to dump everything on them they will fix the world they will pay for our sins uh, let's borrow more money they will pay the taxes and they will somehow get the debt on children absorb what they see in their homes they absorb the values they see in the community they absorb the values they see in society you can lecture them every day day in and day out from some special government curriculum but they are not really going to uh, they are they are going to match what they see around them and what their elders are doing and so it is impetus on all of us to change values cannot be taught they need to be lived and if we do not provide great role models and not in some great uh, you know televised role model but in our own homes in our own societies and say look if we don't believe and act on these values no matter how how many ncert textbooks we write on values our children will never learn those and they will never act through those the second thing and you asked about the two big the one big value which i want us to take in from covid-19 is a hard shift from ideological issues to pragmatism we don't have time for ideologies whether you're left wing right wing up wing down wing green wing yellow wing orange wing 
God knows how many different ideologies that are now uh, people profess. There is only one ideology that matters today. There is only one value, which is pragmatism. Uh, you know, in my lifetime, I've seen Vision 2005, Vision 2010, Vision 2020, 2020, 2030. Now I'm hearing people skip directly to Vision uh, 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 2050. And, uh, you know, I want to ask people, what is Vision October 2020? I don't care what, what to plan 30 years from now. But I want to really understand what are we doing in the next three months? And is that vision broad enough and impactful enough to truly move the uh, needle? And on those very specific points, Shri, you know, education reform has been needed. We've punted it almost for two to three decades now. Uh, uh, when and, and it is needed at scale. And at scale in India, uh, we have to understand a very simple thing. Uh, neither private or public education has the scale that India really needs. I'll give you a small example. This entire central education budget of India is equal to the annual budget of Harvard University, plus minus uh, 500, 600 crores. And so you can understand that to really get to that level for an entire country, so much more needs to be happened. And for that, I have only three very specific points. They are not new. Everybody knows it. First, we need this new education reform policy out. It was supposed to come out pre-COVID. I'm glad it, they didn't take it out because now they can hopefully put in the lessons from post-COVID. And, and that has to be pushed out immediately. The big thing that we need is a massive focus on government and public education, holding people accountable to that. All too often, governments at the state and center have outsourced all responsibility to private education. Private education should never be the first choice or the first option for any citizen of India. It should always be a luxury. It should always be priced accordingly. And they should count on the state to provide this public education. And my big thing to all ministers and everybody who is involved in education is let go of private education. Let them do what they want. Focus on improving government and public education. And the very last is that if we want to, if we want to put in this entire system, right, and, and, and there we are looking at at hundreds of thousands of crores coming in, we need private investment in education that can only come through FDI. And if we don't create an ecosystem that delivers on that, um, it's not going to come. And so that sort of massive reform is what we need. And I don't want to wait for vision 2030, 2050 for that. Pragmatism today, ideology has to take a backseat. Awesome. Thank you, Aditya. Wonderful points. Pragmatism, ideology, I mean, vision within this instead of vision 50, 50. 50 whatever education reform at scale a new education policy yes uh, interesting point there is time right now we have not implemented the policy yet so taking the learnings from covid put in there much more emphasis by the government and the state on public yeah that's pretty interesting point i mean the government the state the public should really you know why not that is the fdi investments thank you so much aditya uh, my point sorry again uh, Uh, again, private education should be the last resort of people or, or, or a luxury option. And we really need to bring in the government option as the number one option that every parent wants, to, wants, it, wants a child to do, particularly in the school education system. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. I mean, the public good should be the bestest of quality in any case. I mean, the others can be, you know, anything. And as you said, the government should not interfere in that space. Let somebody else do whatever. And that can be its own creativity. Thank you. Dr. Sheetal, the uh, floor is yours, please. Thank you so much. So I completely agree with you. I think pragmatism should be one value that we should carry forward. Along with pragmatism, I think empathy, uh, creative humanism, something I would elaborate uh, upon is uh, that creative humanism is something wherein we actually innovate in the space of humanism and, you know, come out with ideas that will benefit the poorest of the poor, the last, the least and the lost. that is required and the third value that we require is cohabitation with the nature i think that is very important what i have been doing for last many years is when my child was born the one thing i started doing is i just started planting one tree every month with him when he was 6 months old my idea was that he will plant around 500 uh, 600 trees by the age of 50 years but i ended up actually planting about 45000 trees in last 3 years and my aim is to plant about uh, 1 million native trees forest trees over next 10 years so what has happened that this dream got multiplied and 
everybody started joining in i have now a team of around 6 to 7000 people who have joined the dream so uh, basically what happened is one day uh, i was thinking about my own eulogy that you know you we write a lot about our profiles our cvs we have big cvs we have big big resumes but we never write our eulogies and i think we should actually start writing our eulogies because when you are on the deathbed nobody is going to speak about the achievements in the cv people are going to write about the work that you have done for the communities and i think it's time now to start about uh, to start writing about those goals what is my goal at when i'm at the deathbed say my first goal is say plant maybe 1 million trees second goal is this third goal is this so start writing those proactively and as you rightly said maybe revise it every 3 months or 4 months rather than having a vision for you know uh, 2050 so i think i i completely agree with you aditya awesome thank you so much dr sheetal in fact yeah, i am reminded of you know amazon follows a strategy any new product which a manager proposes the manager has to come with a one page press release saying that if ye pro- if this product is approved with the budget today it will be ready after one year so one year from today what will be the press release Amazing. right it forces the manager to really think the quantitative and the qualitative together and then you know come down to what the product technology and all thank you sheetal so much but your eulogy is a different context much wider rajiv the floor is yours sir i i will I, i just wanted to pick up on something uh, the honorable minister said that uh, in the face of a crisis like this everyone has to work together so so and and he he gave us some excellent examples of how uttar pradesh has handled the problem uh, and uh, uh, i was just seeing some numbers put out in terms of the number of deaths in the state as a percentage of the population the number of cases as a percentage of the population and uh, uh, those examples really uh, uh, given by the minister really bear out how uh, in a situation like this there is no point uh, playing a blame game and uh, if 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 all segments of society do not come together then you cannot handle it so uh, f- from a values perspective my takeaway would be that this is the time to collaborate this is the time to work together and and many of the reform ideas many of the other bigger proposals i think those debates are ongoing uh, you know different different uh, interest groups different entities have their own ideas about that but uh, on the specific point of values i think i think that is a very good uh, 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 recommendation that uh, society and state or society and government must work together awesome thank you so much rajiv uh minister chohan your thoughts and actually what we could do we have about 6 minutes remaining after that this will automatically shut down but what we could do now is that if you have any question with any of the panelists or if any of the panelists have a question with each other or with minister chohan uh, we could do it you know as a free uh, free flow interaction so minister saab any your comments and then it can be a free uh, conversation let's see all that i would want to tell you <clears throat> is the whole whole thinking has changed what i am seeing from the society because i am uh, i live in a big city in delhi i used to live now i am living in lucknow then i also live i go back to my constituency the i would say the importance now has shifted from the big cities to the villages suddenly after this covid people have realized how important it is how important is our rural areas or our villages and when you talk you know the, this insecurity which has come in people have suddenly realized i'm talking about the middle class people maybe lower middle class people suddenly they have realized that they will get food twice a day if they go and live in the village because living in the city is because is is insecure you you know you can lose a job in any time anything can happen corona virus has taken place something else can happen tomorrow and then it is very important including like, like 
my close friends also my relatives also they have started looking back at the villages they all want to have a house in the villages so that you know they, they can fall back upon okay okay at least we'll go back we'll till the land and we we'll, you know at least we'll get food we don't have to depend on the others see so you know this this think the this transformation has taken place in the thinking of the people and suddenly we will realize a lot of importance will be given to the rural areas a lot of industries will come there small mm-hmm. industries will come cottage industries will come so that people can live in their houses and then get, they can do some little work and uh, i would i will appeal to these to the to the industry friends also to the entrepreneurs uh, that please don't concentrate on the big towns only please go back to the rural areas so that these migrant workers the problems which was faced by the migrant worker it was not a small nearly 1 crore people have come have left their houses in up and around there only uh, maybe about 50 60 lakh people from bihar who left their houses went to the other states to work suddenly they found they were helpless they found and they all wanted to go back to their houses because the the fear was there and the fear was of death okay even if i have to die i will go back to my where i come from i will go back there i will die there at least i there will be people around with who will be there you know this is the kind of psychology which has come in now and a lot of work will have to be done uh, coming back to the education the children also today let, let's be honest Uh, i talked to the children they are living they are staying at home for more than 2 months now nearly 3 months they are all at home some of them who are clever well they've got the internet uh, and um, you know they, they've got some classes going on online classes going on but there are lots of them who are who are doing nothing they just you know uh, whiling away their time so a yes, lot of minister we have just one and a half minute left so if i can give with your permission 30 seconds each to our yes. panelists may i do that please yes. thank you so much yes sir uh, 30 seconds each uh, 30 35 seconds no more please yeah adil you are on mute uh, aditya please uh, uh, unmute uh, i will i will try to as quick as possible i completely agree with uh, minister chohan of all the great societal changes i think uh, what has happened is this has been a massive referendum on the social contract of india and i think the key thing what everyone is saying is that india has failed and now we have to wake up from that facade that has gone up that of safety security you pay your taxes you be a good citizen and the government and society will take care of you that has been put to lie what next that's what we need to now work on thank you so much aditya dr sheetal 30 seconds please yeah i think now we have to really work on smart villages rather than only smart cities and we are devising the criteria for smart villages because what i feel is when the last man in the society feels that he is smarter not the village you know as per uh, in the form of technology the last man has to feel that he has become smarter i think that is the definition of smart village awesome thank you uh, rajiv please and we have 5 seconds remaining at the end we could take a group selfie if it allows but Rajiv, thirty seconds for you. No, so uh, I'll I'll just echo the thoughts there that a uh, uh, lot of things to be discussed, debated. Uh, we've always been a, a rancorous democracy, and uh, uh, I think that will be going on for many many months and probably many years to come once this crisis is behind us. Thank you so much. We have two just five seconds, seconds left. Can you give me two sec, three seconds. Ali sir, yes, you will be very happy to know. that next month we are going to plan the government of up is going to plant 25 crore trees plantations 25 crores in in the state of up awesome thank you so much and just to let you know while you were saying that the the, the system cut me off uh, towards the end but i think we got your last sentence in thank you very much mr johan thank you very much aditya berlia thank you dr sheetal ante thank you uh, rajiv mantri Once again, was a pleasure. I really hope we had more time. Yeah, please. Can we take that group selfie? I think we. I, I, I think it's still it's showing. Yes, yes, yes we can. Uh, I have it on my end. I can take if it's showing yours. But let me take at my end. I'll share with you all. Let's see. Uh, virtual groupy, start. Okay. 
I think you each have to take on your own system, right? Yes, yes. Yes. There's an icon on the right hand side on the bottom right. For uh, it's prompting us. We, so I have finished my selfie. It, each one of you has to do their own selfie. Yeah. I think it takes two seconds. Oh, two people in waiting for the last three. Yeah, I have taken. You will have to take it on your own system. Please look at the bottom of the screen. On the bottom of the screen, on the right hand side. Three done, four done. Yes, one more. Five people finished. Great. Awesome. I, I, I hope it's showing up at your end, GS taken. Yeah, let's see. Confirm to end, Goofy. We all have five. Let's see. Awesome. Thank Excellent. You. And it's sent us a photo as well. Great. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Been a pleasure. Nice. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Minister, as always. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot.